Hello there, and welcome to Geek Speak. My name is Nath, and you've caught me having a calming cup of tea, because I've just had my backside handed to me by the final boss of Sonic Mania for the umpteenth time, and I need some calm down juice. For decades now, video game bosses have been the gatekeepers to whether or not we succeed in completing our video game of choice. This one in particular isn't actually that bad, especially in my supersonic form here, but there are bosses out there that make me shiver at the thought of fighting them once more. Here are seven video game bosses that can absolutely get in the bin. First up this week is the first boss that ever caused me to launch my controller across the room like a plastic nerf ball. Bowser in the Sky, also known as the final boss of Mario 64. Not only does this oversized lizard have the absolute cheek to show up with triple the health of his previous encounters, but once you've launched his scaly backside into two of the nearby bombs, chunks of the stage begin to fall away. The fact that eight-year-old me discovered the hard way as I helplessly watched Mario descend into the abyss. None of this was helped by the fact that the only way to damage the Koopa King is to grab him by the tail and swing him around in circles before launching him outwards with all the predictability of a drunken wasp. This one for me can absolutely get in the bin. And speaking of bosses who rock up with a ridiculous increase of health, Engine from Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped takes the medal, the cake, and the absolute mick when he arrives with a whopping 12 bars of health, or for context, four times the amount of any other boss in the game. To make matters worse, he also lulls you into a false sense of security by splitting said health bars into two separate stages. So, after I triumphantly and quite smugly set down my controller, after beating the first of his five hit phases, I was utterly blindsided as he immediately reappeared in a bigger, badder bot to stomp my smug face into an asteroid. Well played, engine. Well played. In at number three is a multi-stage boss that very nearly broke me. It is the final boss of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, and is such a long-winded affair that the thought of redoing it for the second Platinum Trophy very nearly ended my 30-hour playthrough cold. The first and last of the four phases in this battle of mammoth proportions are not all that hard. It's stages 2 and 3 that see Naruto, the orange-clad spiky-haired protagonist, face off against six of the tailed beasts, for context, the tailed beasts are enormous animal manifestations of chakra, aka ninja magic. This all sounds suitably epic, until you realise that you fight these beasties two at a time, and that they are all, for lack of a better terminology, the size of an oil tanker. Couple this with a health bar that does not replenish, zero healing items, and lock on so unpredictable I at one point just closed my eyes and prayed. This fight for me can absolutely get stuffed. Now, this next boss holds a very special place on this list, as simply put, I have yet to beat it. Well, I have beaten it on easy, normal, hard, and veteran, but Praetorian from Mass Effect 2 on Insanity Difficulty? Oh my goodness, why does this thing even exist? This behemoth of a space squid crossed with a terminator shows up with hordes of husks that chip away at your health and spawn all across the arena, while your guns do absolutely stuff all damage to the Praetorian shielded hide. To make matters worse, Praetorian himself comes to play with a particle beam that cuts through shields, armour and fleshy people stuff like a hot knife through butter. Seriously, respect to those who have made it past this one, I salute you albeit from a safe distance, hiding behind my sofa. For the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed my playthrough of Sonic Unleashed. The Sonic stages are fast, exhilarating, and eye-wateringly beautiful, while the Werehog stages hit a mindless button mashing spot for me that only Dynasty Warriors has hit before. Unfortunately, the last 45 minutes of this game are mercilessly hard, I would honestly rather listen to a Big the Cat audiobook about frog dissection. Once you clear the nightmare that is Eggman Land, you are faced with the multi-stage battle against Dark Gaia. 
Sadly, it's more the gameplay rather than the actual boss that is the real villain here, as Sonic handles with the same turning circle that the Titanic had. The camera is poor and the time limit for Super Sonic is so strict, literally every ring counts. A very poor crescendo to an otherwise excellent concerto. Our penultimate entry this week takes the expression larger than life and takes it to the absolute nth degree. The Adamantois from Final Fantasy XV is an optional boss that I honestly wish I had left well alone. The overgrown tortoise that uses a literal mountain for a shell doesn't move all that fast or indeed hit that hard. He does however come with 5 million hit points. For context, the combined HP of my party when facing this monolithic mammal was around 3000. 5 million, 3000. Silly me, sat on a sofa nearly at midnight, salivating at the shiny gold trophy, had no idea that battling this monstrosity would take me all the way until 2am. I regret nothing as Final Fantasy XV was my first platinum Final Fantasy game, but in future I will be examining mountains far more carefully. And finalement, comes a boss fight that caught me so off guard I died without getting a single attack off. The Kingdom Hearts series is for the uninitiated a Disney JRPG with an occasional cameo from the Final Fantasy VII cast. So you can imagine my open mouth awe when Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII rocked up with an obscene number of health bars and proceeded to Masamoon me straight in the Keyblade. What followed was an epic encounter to the soundtrack of One Winged Angel, where old Sephi swings around his skyscraper of a sword versus Sora and his significantly less impressive key that is also a sword. With no Donald Duck or Goofy to support, Sora is at the mercy of this platinum haired pain in the backside. It took me almost a week of grinding XP from the Heartless to stand even half a chance at sending the evil so and so on the first train back to Midgar. Sephiroth, I salute you, but you can kindly get her off and get away. Into the bin. And there we go, seven bosses that can absolutely get in the bin. Thank you so much for watching, please like, share, subscribe, but until next time, stay safe, love you, bye.